Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the central limit theorem and how that applies to finding to making normal distribution calculations. Let's start out this way. We're going to divide this box in half, and on the first half, we're going to talk about what the central limit theorem is. Central limit theorem. Also known as the CLT. Now the CLT says this: if the sampling distribution of X bar uh, the sample distribution of X bar is approximately normal when the sample size is large enough. So the sampling distribution is approximately normal when the sample size is large enough. And our magic number here is going to be n is greater than or equal to 30. So we're looking for a sample size of 30 or larger. Well, what that means is to review, we'd end up with a curve, looks something like this, it would be normal our mean would match the mean of our population. Our standard deviation would still be subject to our sample size. And this is for the sampling distribution. Of X bar. And we'd calculate our Z score by X bar minus our mean over our standard deviation, taking into account our sample size. And then we could go table A, or we could do our normal CDF calculations. So let's do a check your understanding. Good way to walk through the check your understanding. We'll read the prompt together. You could pause and start the example on your own, and then unpause to check your work, because I will have the full solution for you here with explanation. Among iPhone users who share their data with Apple, the weekly screen time is skewed to the right with uh, mu. Uh, 13.5, so a mean of 13.5 hours and a standard deviation of 3.75 hours. A random sample of 100 iPhone users are selected and the mean weekly screen time of the sample is calculated. A, describe the shape of the sampling distribution of X for samples of 100 randomly selected iPhone users justify your answers. Well, on one hand, we have this piece of information here. The original is skewed to the right, so it might think might make us think that we're skewed to the right. But what we're going to say is, we can see that we have sample of a hundred here. So by the central limit theorem, the sample size. of 100 and of note and is greater than or equal to 30 we know that the sampling distribution of x bar is approximately normal So even though it's skewed to the right, because we have a sample size that's 100, we know that the sampling distribution of X bar is approximately normal. Find the mean and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of X. Be sure to check the 10% condition. Once again, the 10% condition tells us that uh, we want to know is our sample size less than 10% of the population that we'd be pulling from. So 10% condition would mean that 100 phones that we pulled, it's less than 10% of the millions of iPhone users. So we can use our, st our standard deviation formula, which would mean that our 
the mean of x bar is equal to our population mean, which is 13.5 hours. And our standard deviation of x bar is going to be equal to our standard deviation adjusted for our sample size, which would mean that we'd have 3.75 divided by the square root of 100, which is 10, which would give us 0.375 for our standard deviation, and that's in hours. So just like that, we've adjusted our standard deviation for our sample size. Then it says calculate the probability that the weekly screen time for the sample is between 12 and 13 hours. We went through a process here that we're going to go through repeatedly over the next couple of months, the next couple of videos, depending on how you're tuning into this particular course. But because it's normal, and now we have our 10% condition, so we have our mean and our standard deviation, we can draw our curve here, call it normal, say that the mean is equal to the population mean, have our adjusted standard deviation, designate our mean down here, and then put in the data that we want. So this is 12, this is 13, and we want the area between 12 and 13. There's a couple of different ways to do this, right? So we could do based on our z-scores. So we could take our 12 hours minus our mean of 13.5, divide by our standard deviation, which would give us a standard deviation of minus 4, so 4 below, pretty significant there. And our standard deviation for 13 is going to be, divided by 0.375, is going to be negative 1.33. And by table A, we would take away the area from 13 below. So we'd subtract the, the area, subtract the area under 12 from the area under 13. And that would give us, 0 0.0918 minus 0 because, I mean, once we get down to four standard deviations, there's relatively nothing down there. Uh, and that's going to be equal to 0 0.0918. The other way to do this would be to do our normal CDF. And when we do that, as a reminder, you have to write in your labels for all of your data that goes into parentheses. We don't want a naked answer on the AP test. So we want to go between 12 and 13, and our standard deviation, our mean is 13.5, our standard deviation is 0.375. And so this is our lower, this is our upper, this is our mean, this is our standard deviation. And when I do that, let me do a little typey typing here. Different than regular typing, this is typey typing. 13 comma 13.5 comma point 375. Okay. Boom. And we get 0 0.0912. So notice there's a little bit of a difference here. And that's why it's important on the AP test that you delineate uh, or denote what exactly you're using for your process. So you could either do method one where you have your z-scores and you lay it all out. So you have to, have, for the z-score, you got to have the formula, you got to have the z-scores, uh, you got to denote that you use table A. For the other option, you would use your normal CDF, but you'd have to have your labels on them. You'd have to have your labels on them and you'd have to denote all your numbers that go inside there. Two different ways to get it. If you designate it which method you use, then the answer, even though they're slightly different, they're going to count that for full credit. So to review, we talked about the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem says that regardless of what the shape of the population is, if you have a sample size that's large enough, greater than 30, we can call the sampling distribution normal shaped. And so then we would have our curve that has our n for normal, our mean that matches our population mean, our standard deviation adjusted for sample size. We did an example where we had something that was skewed to the right, but because our sample size was 100, we were able to say by the central limit theorem, the sample size of 100, uh, the sample distribution was approximately normal. We checked our 10% condition to ensure that we could use our standard deviation formula. And then we were able to calculate a probability of the area under a curve as we've been doing throughout this course. So that's the basics of the central limit theorem and using it to find a sampling distribution or to operate and find normal distribution calculations in a 
mean situation, uh, sample means situation. So uh, 